Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History, and I'll be sharing with you what happened today in history in the year 2011 on May the 25th. Well, on this day in history, Oprah Winfrey, the renowned American TV host, ended her famous talk show uh, by, you know, telling her viewers of a quarter of a century, about 25 years, goodbye. In 2009, she had announced that she was going to end her show once, you know, it was 25 years. And, you know, it was a very emotional moment that day when she walked on stage. You know, there was a standing ovation. She held and kissed her partner and, you know, just said goodbye to her, to her viewers from all around the world. She said she had, you know, interviewed them, but she learned a lot, lot from, from lots of her, uh, of her audience and interviewees. Among the most popular people Oprah Winfrey has interviewed include Aretha Franklin, Tom Cruise, TV Wonder, Michael Jordan, Madonna, you know, lots of stars of TV, music, and movies. Oprah Winfrey has, you know, gotten lots of accolades and awards throughout her career in TV. You know, she's just an amazing personality. She's a name you can't afford to miss when you're talking about, um, you know, especially influential women in media globally. When she, when she quit her show in, in the year 2011, uh, you know, after 25 years, she launched her own, own network, Oprah Winfrey Network, standing for, you know, OWN, Oprah Winfrey Network. She launched that. And uh, remember in 2009, she also built a school, you know, millions and millions of dollars for disadvantaged kids in South Africa. She's just an amazing personality. She's kind. She, I mean, Oprah Winfrey is just everything. If you are a media girl, if you're aspiring to be in media, Oprah Winfrey is, is definitely the one person you'd mention as your role model, someone you want to be, be like, because she proved that it can be done. I mean, her earliest, yeah, Oprah Winfrey began her media career when she was just 19 years old and she faced rejection. There was a time she was basically sacked from her news reporter role because her editor said she could not separate her emotion from her news reporting. She said she struggled with objectivity because how would you see a burning man and not cry, you know, live on air and things like that? So um, she could not separate her emotion and she was, she was sacked from her job. But she was eventually given a, a talk show, um, sort of like a consolation. And she excelled at it because, you know, in the talk show, she poured out her heart. She connected with her audience. She was very engaging. So the show quickly, you know, became very popular. And, you know, she did that in so many TV stations across the U.S. before she started her own Oprah Winfrey show, you know, that lasted for 25 years. So it was in this day in history, um, May the 25th, 2011, that Oprah Winfrey aired her last show and said goodbye to her audience, you know, millions of viewers around the world. Phenomenal story. Uh, 25 years on TV, not, it's not a no joke. And of course, 25 successful years, no joke. Mm -hmm. uh, rumor has it that she's actually from Imo State. Uh, yeah, her name is Opara. Yeah, yeah Winifred yeah, Opara. Yeah. I think she's from Delta. Ibo. Uh, or is it Imo? I think it's Imo State. Oh, Anambra. It must be Anambra State. <laughs> All right, we're just joking. Stay with us, all right? Moving on. On this day in the year 2020, Minneapolis, Minnesota, a 46-year-old man, um, sadly, of course, uh, you know, his death changed, his, you know, a lot, you know, in, in our history. It was in the middle of the pandemic, and it was one of those moments in American history, and of course, across the world, that shook, you know, the, the, shook the whole world. A 46-year-old, George Floyd, was murdered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, during an arrest where he was restrained in a prone position facing down on the ground for more than nine minutes, provoking protests across the United States and around the world. Of course, he was arrested on the suspicion of using a fake $20 bill. During his arrest, a police officer, Derek Chauvin, a white police officer with the Minneapolis Police Department, knelt down on Floyd's neck for about nine minutes. Two other police officers, J. Alexander Kyung and Thomas Lane, assisted Chauvin in restra restraining Floyd. A fourth police officer, To Thao, um, was, of course, stood on the sidelines preventing bystanders from uh, interfering. Um, while, of course, he was handcuffed and running out of breath. Um, um, till date, I still haven't been able to watch that <laughs> video because I have uh, chosen to not let that get into my mental space. But um, it was a very, very sad eight, you know, plus minutes of, um, you know, of, um, you know, that went across the world, seeing him die um, um, right there on the floor. 
Uh, Chauvin was later convicted of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder, and of course, second degree manslaughter. Uh, the other two, Kyung and Lane and Thao, rather three, were charged with aiding and abetting second degree murder. Floyd's murder at that time led to worldwide protests against police brutality, police racism, and lack of police accountability. And since then, you know, there's been a few other cases that, um, you know, are pretty similar, um, but have become, you know, I think there's been more a light shown on police brutality in the United States since then. Mm -hmm. It also uh, created a, a bigger space to speak about racism and speak about uh, uh, racial injustice and segregation in the United States that has gone on for decades and decades and decades. And police brutality and, against and police brutality, yes. And funny enough, same time, you know, Nigeria also, sometime later in the year, got into its own conversation on police uh, brutality. Mm -hmm. um, in a different, you know, uh, direction, a different, um, well, different direction, but still on police brutality. But um, on this day, uh, George Floyd lost his life yes. um, in a very, very pathetic mm. and, and sickening way. Uh, and I, I remember that, I can't remember her name now, but the lady who captured on her phone the moment when George Floyd died, the moment when that police officer was harassing George Floyd, she captured it, put it online, and it spread like wildfire, she was given an award, basically, for, you know, we call it citizen journalism, right? She was able to observe what was happening, bring out her phone, even though people argue that, you know, you could have done something, but that's the police. Yeah. I mean, what can you do against the police, right? Yeah. But it was that video that she shot on her mobile phone that basically set the world on fire, igniting, you know, the world's attention regarding this very important issue in the United States. So yes, it's, you know, that also goes, goes on to show the role of, you know, social media in creating advocacy. Because if that lady had never captured that video, George Floyd would have just become one of the many thousands yeah. of black Americans that are killed on a daily basis yeah. by police officers or that are abused. Let me not say killed, that might be a fallacy. That are abused and harassed by police officers globally, not just in the US, in Nigeria, it happens every day. You know, so I appreciate the power of social media how you can rally people together. Remember, social media was one of the you know, rallying points of the NTAS protests as well. So it just shows that we can, we can all contribute our quota one, one way or another. Yeah, but all, don't, don't also get you know, more involved in the social media aspect and forget to actually uh, uh, um, act. You know when it's time to act. You know no, when, people when you have opportunities to people save People acted. A life. They came out to protest. No, I'm no, no. About, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, about the judge I'm saying, Floyd situation you know, I'm now. saying, you know, yes, we appreciate social media and we appreciate, you know, being on the, you know, on the stands and citizen journalism and all of that, you know, but it shouldn't, you know, become the more exciting part of the whole process. If you see a life that needs to be saved, oh yes, definitely. Yeah, don't, Why don't not? Don't let your Why phone not? or video in it Why become not? more important Why than Why saving not? that life. Yes, you know, that's that's, that's that should be the priority. Yeah. That should be the priority. Indeed. Absolutely. You know, but then people ask you for evidence. Like this hentai process, you have the police and the government even saying we are the bodies. So yeah. th there's a place for everything. But saving that life is paramount, you know. Yeah. I witnessed an accident um, on Friday and I remember calling, calling 112. That's the Lagos emergency number. RRS. They put me on hold for a long time. I remember crying basically that day, seeing someone who... Her baby had, you know, been flung to the side. She had been knocked off the, uh, off the tricycle. She was face, I mean, she was basically bleeding. Calling the emergency number, no response. But we saw Nigerians. Of course, there will be people who brought out their phones to record. But, you know, we saw Nigerians who, you know, tried to get to her aid, carry her, put her in a vehicle, tried to get her to the hospital. So, yes, it's important to respond when you can, save a life when you can, help when you can. But there's also the place for citizen journalism because yeah. that exactly was the beginning point of Judge Floyd's case gaining worldwide attention and to see that, you know, justice was served. We talked about how, you know, the courts eventually dispensed justice in this case for the police who knelt on Judge Floyd's neck. You know, his burial, you know, happened in, in, in June 2020. It was a worldwide, you know, uh, an event, just something so, so sad. And Judge Floyd's case will forever be a, a, you know, an important event when you're talking about 
police brutality, and even when you want to show the effectiveness of the American justice system, because we're still talking about the entire panel. These are people who died, you know, we yeah. saw evidence, but you're still seeing one or two issues of the panel, what justice have been dispensed, what recommendations have the panel made, but it, it, it took time in Judge Floyd's yeah, case, so, but justice was eventually served. Yeah. So. so a system that works, works. You know, it, it does have its own flaws, you know, but um, there are certain, you know, parts of the system that are still very effective, you know, mm -hmm. when they should work. Um, you know, the Nigerian system has more flaws than effectiveness, sadly, you know, and uh, there's too many loopholes, you know, there's too many, you know, places where the system just drags its, its feet, you know, and they say justice denied is, uh, justice delayed is justice denied mm -hmm. and some of all of that. Um, but yeah, we continue in conversation, we'll, we'll get into that another time. Um, that's all for today in history, 2011 and 2020, Oprah Winfrey and George Floyd. Stay with us. Women in politics, that's what we're getting into next. How important is it, you know, that we involve and create a space where there's more uh, women in uh, politics? And of course, uh, but before that, we are going to be speaking about uh, a crisis, you know, concerning uh, Ned Walker, of course, uh, who is being accused of land grabbing and the arrest of uh, certain indigents of Idumeje community. We'll get it right into that uh, after the short break. <laughs> 